All right, welcome back Algebra 2 students. This is Mrs. Roberts and we're going to be talking about radical functions. It's the second section in this part of the chapter that we're covering, but it's actually the seventh or 8.7 section in your book. It's called radical functions. And our objective today is to graph radical functions and to explain their transformations. Don't know if you remember this, but we did do the transformations with the squared functions. We took x squared and we added things to it or subtracted things to it and saw what it did, and that's exactly what we mean by a transform transformation. We don't have any vocab words today, so we're just going to jump right in to looking at some of the problems. Our first problem is simply to graph the equation y equals the square root of x, or f of x equals the square root of x. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, you can use that, but let's try it without for this first one at least, and we're going to do this one together. Now, it makes sense to choose numbers that we already know are perfect squares. We can put 0 in. What is the square root of 0? Zero? 0. We can put 1 in. What's the square root of 1? One? 1. We can put 4 in because 4 is a perfect square. What is the square root of 4? 2. We can put 9 in. What is the square root of 9? 3. We can put 16 in, although it's going to go off our graph, but that's okay. What is the square root of 16? 4. We are only looking for the positive values here. Could I put a negative 1 in for x? No, I couldn't because the square root of a negative number is imaginary. So we can't use the negatives. We can only use the positive numbers. So let's plot these points here. All right. So we have the point 0, 0. We have the point 1, 1. We have the point 4, 2. And we have the point 9, 3. Now we're going to connect those. If you use a graphing calculator, you'll see it's got kind of a little bit of an arc to it. I'm going to use that one just a little bit. And it's going to keep on going because it's only going to get up to 4 way out here at 16. Whoops. And it's going to keep going like that. That is our parent function, the square root of x. Now let's see what happens when we do some other things to it. All right. So now we have the square root of x, and we're going to add 5 to that after we've taken the square root. So we're going to take this first number, and again, we're going to use those same ones because that's going to make it easier for us to deal with. So we've got the square root of x, so we're going to use 0 again. 0 is a perfect square. The square root of 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5. Okay. 1 is another perfect square, so we can put that in for x. The square root of 1 is 1, plus 5 is 6. We can put a 4 in for x. Square root of 4 is 2 plus 5 is 7. Now before you start thinking that we've got a linear function, what happens here, these are not going up by the same amount. Um, what happens if we put uh, 9 in? Square root of 9 is 3. Nine, square root of 3 plus 5 would be 8. Square root of 16 oops, is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. Now let's graph these. We have the point 0, 5, which is right there. We have the point 1, 6. We have the point 4, 7. The point 9, 8. And the point 16, 9, whoops, which would be way up here and way off to the side. So we're not going to graph that one. But again, we've got this arc. It kind of goes like that. It's going to keep going out as we get, keep going up as we go out. But it won't um, actually uh, level off. It'll keep moving out. But let's compare that to the graph we just had. What happened to that graph? What's the difference between those two things? Right, the graph moved up 5 units. And since it moved up 5 units, think about what that equation looks like that says to move it up 5 units. Okay. Now, what do you think this one's going to do? Is it going to move it down 4 units? Well, let's check it out and see. Let's pick some x's. I'm going to let you do this one. Pick some x's that you would put in there. Subtract 4 first, though, because that's under the radical sign. And then take the square root of it. Now, 
again, think about x's that are going to give you perfect squares. So you pause it, try these, and let's see what you get. All right. So if I put a 0 in, and that doesn't help me because 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. That's not going to work. The smallest number I can put in for x is a 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. If I put a 5 in for x, 5 minus 4 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. Now, if I put a 6 in for x, I get square root of 2, and that's not a number that I can graph very easily, so we're not going to use that one. If I put the 7 in, I get the square root of 3. Again, that's kind of hard to graph, so let's try 8. If I put an 8 in, 8 minus 4 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Um, if I put a 9 in, I get the square root of 5. If I put a 10 in, I get the square root of 6, and so on. Um, so it's going to be harder to graph those. Let's try um, 11 would give me the uh, square root of 7. 12 would give me the square root of 8, which isn't a perfect square either. But 13, if I put a 13 in, 13 minus 4 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. Now, the three, 13 is off a little bit, but we can kind of guesstimate it just a little bit. So I get the point 4, 0, so that's right there. Okay. I get the point 5, 1. I get the point 8, 2. And I would be at the point 13, 3, about out here, maybe a little further out, about there. And so we do a graph kind of like that. It continues going up. Now. Did that move that down 4 like that subtraction said? No, what did it do? It moved it to the right 4. Think if, if you can remember some of those rules. Think about that. Think about what happens when you do something, a transformation under the radical sign versus what happens when you move, make a transformation outside of the radical sign. All right, so now before you graph this one, I want you to think about what do you think it's going to do? I want you to predict what do you think it's going to do? What is that minus 3 under the radical sign going to do? And what is that minus 2 outside of the radical sign going to do? If you put it in your graphing calculator, be really, really careful. Make sure that you stop the, x, the radical sign at the end of that x minus 3. Otherwise, your calculator, if you don't, if it takes the square root sign all the way over it, it's going to think that's x minus 5. And that's not what we want. Okay? Did you write down what you think it's going to do? All right. Well, let's try graphing it now. Again, let's pick x's. If I pick 0, 0 minus 3 is a negative 3. That doesn't work. If I pick 1, that's going to give me a negative. The smallest number I can pick would be a 3. If I put a 3 in, okay, 3 minus 3 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Minus 2 is a negative 2. Now, because that minus 2 is outside, it's okay to get a negative number there. What happens if I put a 4 in for x? 4 minus 3 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Minus 2. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. I think that negative is not going to be better there. Okay. How about if I put a 5 in? 5 minus 3 is 2. Square root of 2, that's pretty hard to subtract, so we're not going to use that one. Let's put a 6 in. 6 minus 3, that gives me the square root of 3. Uh, three. Again, that's a number that would be harder to do. We'd have to use our calculator, so let's find ones that are perfect squares. 7 minus 3. Let's try 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. 8 minus 3 is going to give us the square root of 5. 9 minus 3 is going to give us the square root of 6. 10 minus 3 is going to give us the square root of 7. 11 minus 3 is going to give us the square root of 8. But 12 minus 3 is going to give us the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay. Now, 12 is just off of our x, so we're going to stop there, and we're going to plot these points. So we have the point 3, negative 2. Okay. We have the point 4, negative 1. We have the point 7, 0. And we have the point 12, 1, about out there. So our graph is kind of like that. Now, if you were to describe this transformation, what would you say it did? I hope you said it moved it to the right. Okay. 
three units and it moved it down two units. And notice, under the radical sign is moving it left to right and outside of the radical sign is moving it up or down. We're going to talk more about this in class, but that's just something I want you to be aware of. Okay. We've got a couple more to look at. What happens if we multiply something outside the radical sign? So again, we can start with our x's as being a 0. Okay, Square root of 0 is 0. Times 2 is still 0. Square root of 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Times 2 is 2. put a 2 in, but that's not going to really give us what we want. Oops, that was not what I meant to do. I just want to erase this little bitty here. All right, so what's a perfect square we can put in? Let's try that again. All right, here's where I need to be. Okay. And 4 is a perfect square we can put in. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We can try the square root of 9, because that's a perfect square. Square root of 9 is 3, times 2 is 6. We can try the square root of 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 16 gets us way off on our x, so we're just going to go with these. So we're going to graph the plot the point 0, 0. Plot the point 1, 2. Plot the point 4, 4. Point nine six, and we can see this curve goes up at a higher rate. Now let's go back and compare this curve to that very first one we did. We call that a vertical stretch. Do you see how it went from being way up high? Or excuse me, not this one is not as high, and then the one we just did goes up much more quickly. We call that a vertical stretch because it's like taking the graph and pulling it up vertically. All right, you try this one. What do you think that one-fourth is going to do to that? You try this on your own. Pause it so that we can come back to it and check it when we're done. Okay, so let's put some numbers in again. We can put zero in. Now when we put a zero in, that gives us zero. Not one-fourth because zero times one-fourth is not one-fourth. It is zero. In here, there we go. This is zero. Okay, we can put a one in. Square root of one is one times one fourth is one fourth. That's where I needed the one fourth. Two isn't going to give us a perfect square. Three isn't going to give us a perfect square, but four will. Square root of four is two, so we'll put a four in for x. Two times one fourth is two fourths, or one half. Now, these are going to be a little tougher to, gra to graph because it's a little bit closer in, but we'll have to do the best we can. 9 is the next perfect square. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths. 16 would be on there. Square root of 16 is 4 times 1 fourth is 1. So that's going to be way out over here and not very high up. So let's plot these points. We have 0, 0. We have 1, 1, 4, so just barely across up the line. We have 4, 1 half, so right in the middle. We have 9, 3, 4, so not even to 1 yet. And then 16, 1 would be way out there. And I know that's looking a little high, but let's see what happens when we plot this point. What would you say that one did when you compare it to the original graph that we started with. Right, it's called a compression. It smashes it down, if you will. It makes it much smaller. What's the difference between this number here, where we multiplied by a 2, and this one here, where we multiplied by a 1 fourth? That's one of the things I want us to talk about tomorrow. I want you to think about that. I want you to write down what you think the difference is between those two problems. And then we're going to look at this last one here. Okay? I want you to try this one. This is the negative square root of x. That negative is out in front, so you've got to take the negative after you take the square root. You try it, and let's see what happens. Okay, 
Now, it's not the x that's being negative, it's the answer that's being negative. So again, we can put a 0 in. Square root of 0 is 0, and negative of 0 is still 0. Square root of 1 is 1, but the negative of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2, but the negative of 2 is negative 2. Square root of 9 is 3, but the negative of 3 is negative 3. And if we could fit 16 on our graph, we would end up with a negative 4. Let's see what's doing happening here. When we graph this one, we have 0, 0. We have 1, negative 1. 4, negative 2. 9, negative 3. And what happened to our graph when compared to that very first one? You see what happened? What's the only difference? Right, it flipped it, or it reflected it over the x-axis, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, so now today's summary, I want you to think about this a little bit. I want you to see what do you think will happen when you add or subtract and the number is being added or subtracted under the radical? What do you think happens when you add or subtract outside the radical? What happens when you multiply by a negative, and let's say a negative outside the radical, because we can't take the square root of a negative number. What happens when you multiply by a number less than 1? What happens when you multiply a number greater than 1? I want you to write at least one question you have for me so that we can talk about those tomorrow. Have a great day.